Hello, hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn, and my order from the Spellbinders warehouse sale just came. I did take everything out of the box because it was so well packaged because I bought a lot, I mean a lot of media supplies and um, with the potential of anything to um, kind of spill or ooze out, I was really happy to see that they bubble wrapped a lot of these different uh, media products separately so that it doesn't um, potentially make a huge mess. So um, I decided to try out a bunch of items that I've never used before and I think the nice thing about some a lot of these is that, um, if not all of them, I suppose, is that, you know, they're not going to go bad. I, w I mean, I wouldn't think so anyways. <laughs> so even though I got a lot of supplies, they're going to probably last a really long time. And so I um, don't have to feel like, just for as a comparison, for example, um, something like your pace or, you know, um, you know, embellishment moves or glacier pace, things like that. Sometimes once you open those and they've already been exposed to air, um, you kind of have to use it up or else it may start drying out and some of them you can revive and others you can't. So um, unlike that, most, if not everything that I buy, I think is going to have a really long shelf life. So these are uh, Fancy Brush Journey Liquid Color. And I've never tried them before. They're dye-based, um, archival, acid-free. And I basically picked up every color that's on sale. Because <laughs> I figured these are going to be really fun for watercolor techniques, making backgrounds. I've been really getting into art journaling. And so I think it'll be fun to work with these in various ways. Especially since I think, um, you know, I also got little little itty bitty spritzer bottles like these off of Amazon. Very, very inexpensive. It's glass. It has a nice fine mist and it's small um, in terms of volume. So I can just mix a little bit of this um, liquid color, maybe dilute it a little with water if I want to really stretch and then create my own sprays. So that's, um, so I did pick this, these up from uh, Amazon for that purpose. So I've got lots of colors here. So I've got Hazelnut Blend, Rich Coral, Catalina Splash, Lavender Fusion, Bubblegum, Riverstone, Turbo Teal, Rustic Rose, Sweet Pear, Candy Apple, not done yet, Tangerine Fusion, I've got Fresh Sage, Peaches and Cream, Watermelon, Fresh Forest, Limeade, Banana Cream, and Pretty Amethyst. So look at that variety of color. Now I think they have other colors. I'm fairly certain there were other colors outside of what I got. I only got the ones that were on sale. So these were a dollar each, which I think is phenomenal price because normally I think they probably retail for, I don't know, six or seven bucks, I'm guessing. So, um, so they're on such a bargain that I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna just get them all. And that way, if I love the product and wanted a, another color, then I can, um, I don't have to like, Put together another order, try to hit, you know, free shipping thresholds and, and all of that business. So those are my <laughs> liquid colors that I picked up. Then I also picked up um, some of these. So these are the color splashes. So these are already designed to be used as a spray. They come in, um, this is a two ounce bottle compared to a uh, one ounce bottle. And it's interesting because this is pigment based where these bottles are dye based. So I'm kind of curious to see how, um, how they compare, especially, I don't think I have specific colors that are the same between the two. So I won't be able to get like a direct color comparison between um, the color splash and the liquid color. But the bottles 
come uh, separate with their own top and then you get um, the spray top. Um, so you take this out and there's the trigger, but you can always put this um, back in when you're not using it so that you can't, it doesn't act accidentally sort of depress and spray wherever you're storing it. But I actually rather like that they um, give you this separately because when you're done using it, especially if you don't kind of use it often, what you can always do is take the spray nozzle off, put this bottle cap back on, and then um, submerge this in maybe some warm water and just spray until it comes clear. And then you have cleaned out your nozzle and effectively you only really need the one um, if you're using it that way where you take it off and clean it every time but that way it just um, helps to avoid or prevent clogging with these nozzles but you do get one per one per bottle I do have you know one for each of these but I, I just like that they they give it to you separate so those are the uh, color splashes from Fun Stamper's Journey. Then another new product to me are the color silks. Now, my understanding of these is that they have um, a little bit of shine to them. So maybe, I don't know if it's mica that's in here or um, another uh, mineral that, that gives it the shine. You can kind of see at the bottom of this one how it's sort of a different color than the than the liquid that it's suspended in. And then my uh, understanding is that there's also a bit of enamel. So when you splatter with these, you'll get a little bit of like a, a little bit of texture, like a little raised um, finish to them as well. So I think that might be interesting to see. So I picked up again, a few different colors. Now here I do have some um, color duplication. So electric lime in the color splash, electric lime, in the silk. Then I have um, cool pool in the silk and I have cool pool in the splash. So it'll be interesting to use together, compare, contrast how the final finish looks. Bubble gum in the silk and I believe there was bubble gum in the um, yeah liquid color. And I did this sort of intentionally because I don't think I got all of the colors. I just think I got enough to um, do a little bit of a compare and contrast, um, but it did pick up several. So the color splashes, I think, were a dollar each, the liquid color were a dollar each, but the silks, um, if I remember correctly, were two dollars each. And so um, let me just double check that real quick. This is Cosmic Grape. Um, so those are the silks, yeah, $2 each on the silks. And I also picked these up. So these are technically re-anchors for the True Color Fusion ink pads. Um, but I picked up silver and gold just to use as um, splatters. And these bottles are great because they sort of have that eyedropper nozzle. So it's easy to control, you know, how much you're how much you're pouring out. Since my guess is that they are gonna be fairly pigmented, and um, a little will probably go a long ways. So, picked up those reanchors as well. So those are the Fun Stamper's Journey um, various media supplies that that I. We'll be exploring and what I'll do is in uh, likely a separate video because this is probably uh, going to be a long haul video since I bought a lot. <laughs> um, I'll swatch all of this out in a separate video and, and um, that way you can kind of see. I did pick up a tube of black licorice acrylic paint. Uh, I think this was either one or two dollars as well. Pretty much everything I bought was one or two dollars. I think there were very few items that were three dollars and the most expensive thing I bought was I think five dollars. But um, I picked this up because I've been getting into paint pouring and making coasters. And so far I've been using white as a base, but I want to play with using black as a base. And so I wanted to pick up a larger tube of black acrylic paint so that I can um, 
not so I can feel like I can be a little bit generous with the paint that I'm using and not um, feel restricted uh, by the little tube that I have uh, because white I do have a, a nice big tube of white and so um, so that flexibility has been really good for me because I, I tend to be a little bit stingy when I use <laughs> my media supplies Okay, so then just out of curiosity, I wanted to see how these inks compared to the Funstamber's Journey liquid color because uh, these are from Jean Davenport, but I do believe that, um, I'm sure the formulations are different, but at the base of it all, I believe uh, the um, both of them are dye-based and uh, obviously water-soluble. And so... At the moment, I'm not seeing where it says whether it's dye or pigment based, but I'm pretty sure this was dye based. But two reasons why I got these, and I did get them in um, various colors as well. Um, one, to compare and contrast. Second, I love the Jane Davenport mermaid markers. And some of my uh, markers are already starting to be kind of used up quite a bit. And I wonder, even though the color names aren't an exact match, I'm wondering whether these are the same or at least similar enough in color to the mermaid, mermaid markers that I have. Um, because that is also a set of, I think, 12 markers. And I got 12 different um, ink bottles here. So lots of different colors. I can read them off real quick. Um, this is tinsel. And we've got blueberry, hydrangea, watermelon, hot cocoa, mermaid tail, limeade, berry licious, fresh air, violet syrup, and Frida cherry and fairy floss. So those are the 12 colors of mermaid markers that I got. Then I also picked this up. This is um, Jean Davenport Aqua Pastels. Now these aren't um, pastels in the sense of like your um, pastels, like um, pan pastels. They're actually watercolor, well it says here, watercolor and a stick. And my understanding is that they are um more um wax like so they're more like gelatos than they are like a pastel stick or a pan pastel that's my understanding but again i haven't tried these yet and i'm curious to see how they compare to gelatos because that's what i i do have and i mean i love jean davenport products i think the colors are always so rich and vibrant and so i'm also curious to try these out I think this pan was, um, uh, or case, the set is, was $3, I believe. And so, you, and you get 12 different colors. So there's that. Then I also picked up these, which I believe are $2 a piece. So these I think are interesting. They're called Ultimate Pen. I believe there were a couple different colors, but I got... Um, these are both black pens. One is matte and the other is going to have a shiny glossy finish. Now I'm curious to see if you can actually tell the difference once you use them. So they'll be, they'll be interesting. But the reason why I got these is that they are um, waterproof pens. So one of the things that I've been kind of debating whether or not to get is um some I think uh some of the fabric I saw like the big brush markers that are essentially a permanent marker so that if you are let's say in an art journal you're wanting to do some doodling or outlining of an image or, or die cut or stamp or something and you want that to stay fixed and permanent as just one layer that maybe you'll do like a water-based technique on top of well being waterproof or being um permanent like that will mean that if you do layer something else on top of that that is water-based it's not going to bleed um and so that's something that i've been wanting to um kind of get 
and I thought these these markers sound like they're gonna achieve what I'm going for and they're a nice brush pen so I'm kind of curious to try these out so I picked up a couple of those then I also picked up I told you I got a lot of stuff so I picked up these this is the uh, ink credible fountain pen and I got all three of them I don't know why I need three but I felt like I wanted them all <laughs> Both of these were a dollar each. This one was $2. I'm guessing because black is a little bit more popular. But um, one reason why I got these is because I just think it'll, it'll be fun to use. Um, and maybe fun to give as a gift as well. But the other thing is they do uh, come with ink cartridges. And my understanding is that these are sort of standard fitting. So if you do use other brand fountain pens and you already have some ink cartridges for that, it'll work in this uh, pen barrel and vice versa. These things will work in other pen barrels as well. But one unique, interesting thing that um, is one of the motivating reasons why I bought these. Um, well, this one I couldn't give up because it's one of my favorite colors. It's this beautiful teal. But it also, each of these also has what they're calling a converter cartridge. And with this, what you can do is if you have any of their ink credible inks you can use the converter cartridge to fill up this cartridge with any of those inks and use it in your fountain pen so I thought that was kind of cool I figured it's as long as I'm already getting the incredible um, inks which I'm prepared to also I bought a bunch of these uh, they came in a set of I think like 24 or so so those incredible inks I think will uh, be fantastic to create little sprays from as well but here's another use for them so anything I buy I do like to think I had a little bit to you know multiple ways of using if it's an extra dollar to, to pick up something that gives me another way of using a different product, then I've basically just sort of stretched the versatility and increased the likelihood that I'll use all of these products because I can use them in combination with each other. And then while I was at it, I also picked up um, the 10 pack of ink cartridges because I think this was also a dollar. And there are five different colors and you get two cartridges in each of the five colors. So there's um, that as well. So picked up the fountain pens and lots of ink options for them, uh, both between the ink cartridge refills and the um, incredible inks. Then I also got these. Um, they weren't super cheap, but they were on clearance. Uh, because you can get generic, uh, water brush pens on Amazon. Like, you can get them for something like, a, you know, less than, like, 50 cents a piece or something crazy like that. Um, if you're willing to buy a lot, anyways. But I wanted to try these out because they were still on clearance, so they're still decently good price. And... I'm kind of curious to see how these differ from like a generic brand and if there is like a difference in quality if the brush or just the barrel or anything like that just to understand like okay when you buy something that's branded um, does that necessarily mean it's a higher quality or is it the exact same product unbranded that you can get for half or a fraction of the cost. So um, I did pick up both. My understanding of the difference between them is that this package has um, a medium brush tip and they're both the same. This package has a fine and a broad brush tip and um, otherwise functionally they're the same. They're, you know, nylon brush tip. It's just how, how uh, large of, a, of the brush tip it is. So there are those. Then I also got, I'm almost done. I also got um, this, which I thought was kind of cool and a fantastic price. So I got this gel plate. It's the um, Fluttering Hearts and it's it's made by Gel Press, which, you know, they, they release probably a very wide uh, range of uh, jelly plates. 
And I, I do have a rather large gel plate that I think is eight inches circle. And this one, while it does have um, these heart, this heart pattern to it, my, my hope is that I can just flip this to the back side and use the back side as a solid, you know, seven by seven gel plate. So kind of curious to to see whether it's gonna work that way or if because these hearts, because the heart pattern here, it's actually raised. And so when you flip this over, does it make the other side kind of unstable to, to really get good prints off of? I don't know. Um, and since, the, these hearts are raised when you do take prints on the back side using the back side um, does do the hearts still come through because it's it's an uneven surface you know what I mean so I'm kind of curious if this will do double duty and I can use both sides because on a normal gel plate you can you can use both sides because they're effectively the same there's no pattern if there's no pattern on them so um, so this was only three bucks. So I figure it doesn't hurt to try and it's a beautiful, um, cute pattern anyways. And so I think it'll be fun to, to play with. I did also pick up some dies. Um, most, most of the dies and stamps that were on sale were things that have been on clearance for a while. So I either already have them or have already decided that I don't need them. But these items, um, did drop in price a little bit so so I took this as a great opportunity to pick them up I love this be uh, this bold type um, lettering and this font set uh, or this die set in general because you get the two options that you can use together or separately so this one's Merry Christmas and this one is congrats and I already have the thanks and smile which I think I got in a mystery bundle from Spellbinders, which was um, how I was introduced to this, because that's the wonderful thing about uh, mystery bundles sometimes is that um, things that you may have seen in the store all the time and didn't kind of give a second thought to, once you have it in a mystery bundle and then you try it out, you're like, oh, that's actually pretty fantastic. And that's basically how I stumbled upon um loving this bold type collection because I I had seen it forever in the shop, even on clearance, and just never thought to to buy it. But when I got it in the mystery bundle and then I started using them, I just really love it because you've got the some debuss detailing in um the one die that's got kind of got that diagonal debuss detail, which you know generally you would maybe use as the shadow layer and then you've got the regular outline uh, word die, but you can use them, you know, both interchangeably and, and flip them. One can be on top of the other, um, and vice versa, or use them separately, as I said earlier. So I thought that was pretty fantastic. The Merry Christmas one, I think this was $5. Um, so that's, this is one of the more expensive, um, die sets that I got, but I figure Christmas being, you know, probably the occasion where I make maybe the second most number of cards for it in a year, um, I figure it's it's worth it. And so I picked that up. This is the other $5 item that I got, which is this gorgeous foil plate. Um, it's got this really lovely horizontal um, pinstripe, and then you have this gorgeous border detail as well. So again, you can use them together, you can use them separately. I mean, you can use this and, and just trim off the curvy bit if all you want is just like a nice panel here. So I think that's a nice option too. So uh, I think there's a lot of versatility in how this can be used. This tag die set was only a dollar and tag dies are fantastic in and of themselves, but this even has the thinks word die and it's sort of an edgeable die because it doesn't cut the bottom edge off. So lots of flexibility for how you might want to use that one. Um, but to have like a word die 
in there is fantastic. And then you get some nice basic shapes. You've got some confetti pieces that you can use as well. Um, if you want to die cut your own sort of shaker bits, you've got hearts and stars. And um, I think two different ways of doing the whole reinforcement at the top here. You can have this, which folds over, or this, which just um, is more like your uh, regular kind of hole enforcer. And then you even get like this cute little um, banner die. You get sort of this nice scalloped um, edge as well. So really cute, very, very all purpose. And so, um, I, I love that. That's that's really cute. And the last thing I got, can't believe that this was, I believe, also only a dollar. And this is um, the snapshot, snapshot frames. And it's pretty crazy good because it's only, um, it's got 11 dies in it. I'm just trying to look up really quickly if, if this was indeed... A dollar um, yeah this was a dollar <laughs> and here's okay so here's why I got it I'm a sucker for for everything kind of mini album camera photo frames um, you know all that all that jazz look how large this photo frame is so I can measure it so this is the main reason why I got this um, yeah, that's nearly, the cut line's nearly to the edge of the metal. So I would say maybe three and three eighths by um, four and five eighths. So a really, really large um, photo frame if you're looking to um, have one really nice kind of focal image. I have a lot of these Polaroid die cuts and in fact I'm uh, midway working on another project but here's an example of <laughs> a really tiny one. Um, well it's not tiny you can fit like you know a character image within there um, but look comparison wise at the size. So this sort of thing is really nice if you want to maybe collage up three or four on a card and uh, build up your your um, your card front that way. But if you're just looking to to um, maybe have one main focal image on a card, I think this size is really nice. Plus, this can also double for really good um, uh, decor in a mini album as well because then you can kind of um, die cut this, put some acetate, leave a little pocket opening at the top so that if you're gifting um, a mini album to somebody they can just slide a photo behind the frame and you can fit, this is two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So that's you know not it's not huge but it's not teeny tiny either so I think it's a nice a nice um size for maybe framing you could have four by six photos printed and then just kind of frame the part of that photo that's the most interesting trim it down and then slip it behind um the Polaroid frame here so I think this would make for a really good mini album um also uh, decoration also so that's cool and then on top of that you do get all of the other uh, 10 dies in this set which include four word dies and this is sort of this sort of has um, it, a lot of die cuts all year round some of them are a little bit a little bit odd choices I think but but still all purpose for all year round crafting so for example you have um hearts and the word love or a heart and the word love so maybe that would be great for valentine's day or you know any um sort of anniversary or weddings things like that we've got the word joy and I think what looks like holly uh, leaves and berries. So that could be a nice um, winter Christmas kind of, um, you know, uh, embellishments for your cards. Then you have the word boo and uh, a bat, 
which I think the bat would be, th- I'd get that for Halloween and stuff. That makes sense. I wonder if like a jack-o'-lantern might have been a little bit more um, multi-purpose or general purpose, but you have those for your, maybe your Halloween crafting. Um, you have the word fall and um, is this a maple leaf or an oak leaf? So you have that for maybe Thanksgiving, fall time crafting. So so there's a little bit something for, you know, all year long. So I think um, the, the Polaroid frame was the main reason why I got it. Uh, obviously at a dollar, it's a steal. Um, but the rest is going to be super, super useful as well. So I believe that is everything that I picked up from the warehouse uh, clearance sale. I got this super fast. I was fully expecting um, delayed shipping because I I assumed they would be crushed with orders because the deals were so amazing. Um, so it was really, you know, kudos to Spellbinders. They got this out to me really, really fast. And I can't wait to dive in especially to all of the different media products that I um, picked up. And I think I mentioned it, but if I didn't, I will be swatching out everything that I got. And especially um, for some of the things where I'm hoping to do a little bit of a compare and contrast between the various types of product, um, it'll be really interesting to see you know, how that um, c- turns out. So I'll do that in a separate video, but when I do have that video ready, I'll link to it at the end of this one in case you're curious to see any of these products in action. And until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Thanks again for joining me. Bye.